Thank you, uh, Senator King, very much. And I, I do think we have an immediate need here, and we need to fulfill our work obligation as Congress to our young men and now women that are serving in our combat arms. Um, I'm going to close with um, a question for you, General Scales. In your statement, you had mentioned mentioned that the the 50 cal our modus is coming up on its 100th anniversary. Yeah, two years. 100th anniversary. That's that's pretty incredible. And the Marine Corps recently came out with new upgrades for the 50 cal, putting on a flash right. suppressor right. that reduces the gun signature by 95 percent right. at night. Right. Uh, just which is incredible. But just think think of the implications of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the 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 Navy and the Air Force have spent hundreds of billions of dollars to build stealth fighters. Well, the ground analogy to a stealth fighter is a stealth sniper rifle or a sniper, a, a stealth rifle that has no flash at night. The 50 caliber has virtually no flash if it's properly suppressed is a better word, not silenced. Mm -hmm. And the sound in terms of decibels is one fifth of the enemy. And I think I mentioned earlier that when you're in a firefight and the IED goes off or, or the enemy opens up with an ambush, you bury your face in the ground and when you look up, you shoot at sound, you don't shoot at people. And I think it would be transformational. Oh, and I asked the commander of 3-5 Marines back in November when I visited him at 29 Palms. I said, it must have been, this is so typical of my friend, the Marines. I said, it must have been expensive to put a suppressor on every one of your rifles. He said, damn, sir. 20 bucks a piece, it was really expensive. Isn't that something? 20 bucks a Isn't piece. Isn't that something? So is that something that our industry is working on? Um, cheap suppressors? I mean, no. inexpensive suppressors? Not that, that I know of. Isn't that something that we should be demanding? Uh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. My, my belief as well. Uh, my belief as well. So we do, do we see this happening with our adversaries or other countries? Are they suppressing the, the larger caliber uh, rifles like that? I, I don't know about the larger caliber. I know that there's the Russian sniper uh, rifle, the Dragunov, and they have a new one. And if you look at pictures of the little green men uh, in the Ukraine, uh, you, you can see several things. You see this new heavy, stiff, uh, uh, a metal-backed body armor. Mm -hmm. You can see the Russians' new uh, helmet. They have uh, a squad-sized radios that are smaller than ours, um, and they have uh, 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 their, their use of sensors, uh, as Mick said, the use of, of tactical UAVs is exceptional, um, and their rifle bullet will penetrate our body armor. And uh, In fact, uh, Senator King uh, and I were talking yesterday the, the, the analogy is very much similar to World War II and tank-on-tank -tank warfare. It wasn't until we got up, went up against the Germans uh, that we realized that our M4 tanks could be penetrated by the German guns and we couldn't penetrate the Panther tanks. Um, General Bradley lost 3,380 tanks in tank-on-tank -tank engagements in 11 months of warfare because the Army didn't discover until too late that our tank guns were outmatched by the German tank guns. This is just an infantry analogy to the same problem. The only difference is, by my calculation, in wars since World War II, over 58,000 infantrymen have died in close combat. 58,000. Why not make sure when they go to war next time, our bullets penetrate their body armor and their bullets don't penetrate ours. There's nothing complicated about any of this. Yeah, Senator, what we, what we also, what we do know on, again, emerging threats, et cetera, particularly with the variants of the AK-47, as General Scale highlighted, and you asked the question, not only the AKM, the AK-74, but also the AK-12, which uh, came out recent technology, and it's similar to what our industry has already been looking at, but it is a modular system. It's kind of like the plug and play, not only suppressors, but different uh, folding stocks, weapon systems, upper receivers, sights, and also the modular adjustable caliber weapon capability. Any closing thoughts, Senator King? 
Okay, well, gentlemen, um, I, I will close by thanking you very much for your testimony today. Your input has been very important. Um, this is an important topic for many of us in the United States Senate and one that we will continue to pursue um, through fruition. That's the goal, is to make sure that we had advanced uh, small arms weapons in our infantrymen's hands, um, Marines and, and Army. So. Um, God bless you for, your, the, for the work that you're doing. We'll continue the good fight, and uh, I look forward to having many more discussions as we work through the, the hopefully, the soon acquisition process. Um, so thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Senator. We'll close the Senate hearing.